Situated between rugged mountains and a vast sea, Vancouver is a city that has natural beauty and a sprawling urban wonderland to explore. Whether it's strolling the seawall in Stanley Park or diving into the vibrant culinary scene, you'll find a lot to like in this fun city. Goodbye, Illinois. For the moment. Welcome, Canada. <laughs> My dad and I spent 24 hours in Vancouver and packed in as much as we possibly could. So come with us as we show you how to spend one day in Vancouver, British Columbia and let us know what we left off in the comments. Today we're spending the whole day exploring Vancouver and we stayed about 20 minutes outside of the city so we're gonna walk to the SkyTrain and take it into downtown. Before you go, note that Vancouver is expensive so we got a hotel outside of the city and then took the train in. Heading to downtown Vancouver. First stop, donuts. Donuts over. Pro tip for the SkyTrain, try to get this view right here so you can watch the city as you're going. It took us about 30 minutes and we had to do one transfer, but overall it was relatively easy to get all the way into downtown Vancouver via the SkyTrain. Made it into the city, that was easy. Here we go. Made it into downtown Vancouver. First stop, coffee and donuts before we explore. We started the day by going to 49th Parallel Coffee Roasters. Also, I have another video on some of my favorite spots in the city that has lots more food recommendations if you're looking for other places to go as well. Hey, this is what a breakfast should look like. This is uh, the health food you've been desiring. This is what breakfast should look like. <laughs> This is the salted caramel old fashioned. Old fashioned is one of my favorite types of donuts. Uh, it's decadent, sweet, sticky caramel, salt on it. That's an incredible donut. So the blueberry one's all right. Salted caramel is amazing as it's gone and Pops is a huge fan of his scone. It's nice, this is really nice. Coffee's good too. From breakfast, we headed down towards the waterfront, taking in a lot of the city's street art on the way. You know, it's really funny. I don't know if it's the time of year or the time of day, but it's crazy. We feel like we have the whole city to ourselves. There's hardly anyone here. It's a really fun way to see a city. So for the first few hours, we're just walking around downtown Vancouver and seeing what we can find. As you make it to the waterfront, the first thing you'll see is the Vancouver Olympic Cauldron, which is 33 feet tall and was built for the 2010 Winter Olympics. Looks like Gretzky was the one who lit it. Next to that is another art piece that I always like seeing when I'm in the city. This is the famous digital orca of Vancouver and I showed it to Pops yesterday. What did you call it? I couldn't remember the name and so I was calling it the robotic killer whale. <laughs> My apologies to folks in Vancouver. Vancouver for messing up the, the robot, robot whale instead of the digital orca. <laughs> the digital orca was made by Douglas Copeland in 2009. This is also a great place for views of Stanley Park and to watch seaplanes landing in the water below you. As we say goodbye to the Digital Orca, this is a good time to talk about Stanley Park, which is basically the best place in Vancouver. You definitely need to spend some time there. We spent most of the day there yesterday, so here's some clips. Stanley Park is massive and it's one of the largest urban parks in North America and is larger than Central Park in New York. You can drive a loop around the entire park and stop at many of the different pullouts, or you can park your car and walk or take a bike around. I have a video on 10 of my favorite spots in Stanley Park that I'll link to in the description, but if you have the time, just walk around, take it all in, and there's actually one interesting thing we're gonna do later in this video in Stanley Park as well. After that excursion to Stanley Park, we're back in downtown Vancouver, heading to Canada Place. On the way to Canada Place, there's another fun art installation called The Drop, which is 65 feet tall, and it was also built in 2009. And yep, it looks like a large water droplet. Pops is never able to find a hat that fits him, and we went into this store, and he found a Canada hat. Goodbye, Illinois. For the moment. Welcome, Canada. <laughs> Canada Place is the large building with white sails that you can see in the Vancouver skyline, and it's also home to the convention center and where many of the cruise ships dock. I'm not really sure what you do at Canada Place. It looked like it was the convention center downstairs, and we came upstairs, and there's not really anything up here, but it does have these 
sails, which are a big part of the city skyline. So we're seeing them up close and cruise ships are over there. You can also do the flyover Canada ride out here. We didn't do flyover Canada, but I think it's kind of like soaring over California at Disneyland. Let me know what you think of it in the comments if you go. There is a small museum called the Port of Vancouver Discovery Center right below the Flyover Canada area. It's tiny, but it has a few exhibits you can see and some interactive panels. So there was a little museum at the end, but there's not much to do out there unless you're gonna do the flyover ride. You guys know that Pops didn't go up here with me, but I love taking the elevator to these lookouts when I visit different cities as it gives you some great views of the downtown area and really shows how sprawling a place like Vancouver truly is. In the 1930s, that was the tallest building in the British Empire. I didn't spend a ton of time up here, but it's definitely a great 360 degree view of the city. It is pretty funny that some of the buildings are taller than it now though. You can't see it, but right here is where the famous steam clock is located. The whole point of our trip is to make it to Alaska, so we're actually going to be driving up to Dawson's Creek and then across through the end of the map up there and Anchorage is up here. I've seen a lot of these lookouts, especially on the recent Texas trip where I went in a bunch of them. I definitely say you can't miss the one in Vancouver because it really gives you a good understanding of this city. It is massive and congested, but really cool from up there, and you can see amazing views of the mountains and the surrounding area. So it's definitely worth doing. After making it back down, I met up with Pops again and we headed towards the Gastown area of Vancouver to see one of the city's most popular attractions, the Gastown Steam Clock. The historic steam clock goes off every 15 minutes, but it's best to see at the top of the hour. The steam clock was built in 1977 and was originally powered by steam, but is now powered by electricity. Gastown is a great place to explore if you're looking to shop or get something to eat. So don't just see the steam clock, spend some time down here as well. I love the unique architecture down here. There's some great restaurants that you can eat at and the tourist shops are also fun. We always pick up some of the maple cream, which is like a spreadable butter and is decadent when we're in Vancouver. We based our time exploring on getting back to see the noon steam clock, as the noon one is the longest one they have each day. It's like our fourth time watching the steam clock on this trip, and I have to say, it's a fun little spot in Vancouver. Yeah. Definitely worth doing. Absolutely. And now we're heading to one of Vancouver's food innovations, Japa Dog. Japa Dog started as a street food stand in 2005, and now it has multiple locations all around Vancouver and is one of the most iconic foods in the city. The website states that they specialize in hot dogs with Japanese-inspired toppings, such as teriyaki sauce and even seaweed flakes. I got the number 13, which is the most ordered meat option. Pops got the number 5, which is a spicy one. We got Japanese curry poutine, and I don't remember how to say these, but they're some type of wasabi mayo balls. At right, number 13, you got fried onions, you got a teriyaki mayo, and you got some type of seaweed on top. Cheers. It tastes like it has a sushi flavor, but with the hot dog, so it's like American and Japanese. I don't even know like what I'm eating right now, but I definitely really like it. So in case you think we always agree or like everything that we go to, I give that place a 10 out of 10. That hot dog was amazing. I wasn't as huge a fan of the sides, but I'd go back for the hot dog in a second. Pops, not so much. Not so much, yeah. I I would not have to come back here. The food was like not like bad, but I just didn't really like it. It wasn't my, Jeff, my vibe. So let us know in the comments if you agree with Pops or I if you come here. From the downtown area, we took an Uber over to the English Bay and we're gonna walk along the water and make our way towards Granville Island. First up was the amazing laughter sculpture, which is a collection of 14 bronze statues. The sculptures were added in 2009 and quickly became a popular tourist attraction in Vancouver. 
This is like an ideal piece of art here. It, it, the goal is to make you smile, and you can't help but walk in here and smile. It, it's, it's beautifully executed. <laughs> From there, we set out to walk along the waterfront, which includes a couple more art installations on the way towards Granville Island. Plus, it was a beautiful and overcast day with lots of people just hanging out at the beach and enjoying the Vancouver summer. One of the most well-known landmarks along this walk is the Nookshuk. The plaque says that this was an ancient symbol of the Inuit culture and is traditionally used as a landmark or navigational aid. It was placed here in 1987, and it's a cool thing to see along the walk. I can't even believe how nice of a day we got. It was supposed to be raining and pretty bad the entire time we were in Vancouver. And look, the sun is out. This is about as good as it gets. This is another one of the art projects that you can see that's like the laughing men that we just saw along the walk. They're all over Vancouver. This sculpture is known as Engagement. I do have to say, I saw some wedding photos underneath here and they were pretty impressive. I'm sure lots of couples have that though in Vancouver. We're almost to the ferry, but there's one more of the art pieces right here. This is another of the pieces that was placed here by the Vancouver Biennale Art Organization. We finished our walk by heading to the False Creek Ferries, which take you over to Granville Island on a five minute ferry ride. These tiny little ferries only cost a couple of bucks and it's a great way to get across the water and to see some views of the bridge in the Vancouver skyline. Plus it's much better than all the traffic that tries to drive to Granville Island, which I'll show you a little bit later in the video. We made it to Granville Island. Granville Island has a storied history where it was a small sandbar and then it became an island and then it got filled in and connected to the mainland and then it was used for an industrial area before becoming what it is today, a place with markets, shops, lots of places to eat, and just an overall fun spot for people in Vancouver to visit. The Granville Island Public Market is the main attraction here and it was incredibly busy and even hard to walk around when we were there. Because of this, we just headed to Lee's Donuts, which many people told us that we had to have when we were in Vancouver. And you know I never pass up a good donut. Okay, so we got honey dip, cinnamon, and raspberry filled. This is the most well-known and popular one. It's the honey dip, it's just a honey glaze. Good doughy consistency, sweet, melts in your mouth. What's not to like? It's a classic donut. I would say it's very good. This was recommended, this one here. This is off the hook. If you like a filled donut, this is warm. The raspberry is really nice. This is one of the best raspberry donuts I've had. It's fabulous. We walked around and explored the market a little bit more before realizing we also hadn't tried another one of the famous Vancouver treats that everybody says to get. So when I came to Vancouver, they said you had to try a Nanaimo bar. Hope I'm saying that correctly. It's like a wafer and nut coconut base with a custard in the middle and then a chocolate ganache on the top. Very decadent. It's got a good crunch from the nuts, a little coconutty, but definitely a strong chocolate flavor. I don't think I can eat this full bar, but that is definitely worth trying. This area is a legit madhouse on the weekend, but it is really fun and you definitely have to come down here and explore art and music and food. It's a fun stop in Vancouver. We had paid for an entire day of public transit, so we walked about 15 minutes outside of Granville Island and grabbed a bus to take ourselves back to the hotel. This is just another reminder to not drive in here on the weekend. It is not worth it. Public transit. I will say it was a little confusing at first, but once I understood the map, Vancouver's public transit was really great. We've been hanging out at the hotel for a little bit, but we're heading back into the city for dinner and one more thing I really want to do in Stanley Park. For the end of our journey, we grabbed the car and we headed to the Davie Street area of Vancouver to try the famous Tom Sushi. Unfortunately, it was a two hour wait, so we headed down the street to try a different sushi place as we really wanted to try how they do salmon sushi in Vancouver. Both my dad and I love sushi, and Vancouver is famous for creating the BC roll, which is a barbecued salmon and cucumber roll. So 
we finally found a sushi place we could go to and this place has wild salmon that they said is from Vancouver. So we're excited about it. This one's interesting because it has, you can see it has mango in it. Mango, asparagus, and wild Vancouver salmon. I like it with the sweet. I've not had sushi that had the sweet in it like that. It's actually an interesting touch. We were pretty hungry from the day and we had six rolls before finishing our dinner. So we were on the hunt for sushi tonight. This is actually the third place we went to because one was closed, one was too busy, but it was a great dinner spot. One more thing left to do in Vancouver. We're back in Stanley Park and we are heading to the nine o'clock gun, which is the cannon they have been shooting off for over a hundred years. And I really wanted to see them shoot it off, but it is, it's cold. The nine o'clock gun is a Vancouver tradition that started in the late 1800s. The gun that they shoot was built in 1816 and it was shot every night at 9 p.m. to synchronize the local clocks. As we wait for the gun to go off, I do have to say that I've had a lot of fun in Vancouver. The city is different than I expected it to be, but there's good food, lots of cool stuff to see. I know I said this earlier, but I like Vancouver. There's a lot of uniquenesses too. I mean, just simple things as simple as um, water float planes flying in and out all day long. I mean, how many cities do you see something like that in? And then the diversity is amazing. You're hearing people talking all different languages as you're walking around on the street. So there's like those little subtle things that you pick up that, that are kind of cool. Let us know what you think in the comments. We just hung out and watched the sunset over the skyline and by the time the gun was about to go off, there was probably 30 people waiting with us. Don't worry, you won't miss it. It starts beeping right before it goes off. And with a bang, our time in Vancouver is over. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring the city with us. That's not the end of our journeys though. We're heading all the way to Alaska. So next up is the Sea to Sky Highway to Whistler, which we're gonna do tomorrow and you can watch up here when it's posted. But until then, we can see you on the next video.